we're going to close out Zechariah 6 visions with this one. We're looking at Zechariah chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Listen to the text. Now the elaborate crown shall be for a memorial in the temple of the Lord for Helam, Tobijah, Jedidiah, and Han, the son of Zephaniah. Even those from afar shall come and build the temple of the Lord. Then you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you, and this shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Although there have been difficulties, the work of restoration of the temple has been coming right along. When verse 15 points to these people coming even from afar to, to rebuild the temple of the Lord, it seems to be pointing to something, something much larger than just what's been happening in Zechariah's day. That's big, but there's something way bigger. Hey, don't forget Zechariah chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. We looked at that. It said that people would come from many nations and be joined to the Lord. So this, is, this, this bigger picture stuff is, is, is already there. And Zechariah now is looking out there and, and sees bigger things. And what it said about those people was that they would become the Lord's people. They're not presently, but then they would become such. And so God is, is working to expand his kingdom. He's including everybody who's wanting to be unselfish and be on the, the universal unselfishness plan. With the return of Jesus, the Davidic kingdom would be established, but he comes first as suffering servant and only then as conquering king. Jesus' incarnation, his death on the cross, all that was still future when Zechariah writes. But God doesn't act without people. He All along the way, he sends his servants. Whether Abraham or Moses or Job, God uses people. Remember, remember when he pointed to Job? The devil came along messing around with everybody in the end. God himself, God brings up, have you seen my servant Job? God points to one of his servants. He says, yeah, this, is, this is kind of impressive. What about you, devil? What can you say about this? That's pretty wild. It's interesting to me how God is always pointing to those who receive him and says, look at here, look at this, look at these people. You know, on our own, we'd probably say, hey, you know, uh, we'll, we'll take the back row here. We're not, we're not interested in being in front. But God is so pleased he puts us in the front row. It's kind of like the parent, you know, and their child, and the child is six years old and sings a beautiful song and, and shares it at church or something. You know what? We all, we all get, all, every, all the smiles come up on faces when we see our kids. And, and, and God maybe has some of that going on with, we, we kind of wishy-washy servants of his, but, but he loves us, and he's so glad when we're able to come up and, and be faithful up front. So God is indeed building a temple. He's, he's launching the Davidic kingdom. The details of the moment are always important, but they always point to something bigger in the Bible. Don't feel sad. Jesus said that in some sense that those who come after will do greater works than he did. I mean, how could that be? And yet, that's what Jesus said. I believe him. I'm not sure how it can be, but I believe him. I want to be part of it. The church hasn't died. The church is not dead. God is on his throne still. If you felt sad because all these mighty things were done in the days before your birth, he has his servants, and your part and my part is to be, to be those servants. Be those servants in these last days. Mm -hmm.